Hello everyone and welcome to Reentry. In this video we will go through uh, the main procedures and uh, uh, ascent of a Mercury Redstone flight. Uh, so the Mercury program has two launch vehicles. One is Atlas, uh, which is the bigger uh, rocket, which is uh, strong enough to bring the entire capsule into orbit. And then this uh, smaller Redstone uh, launch vehicle uh, that will uh, bring the spacecraft into a sub orbital uh, flight but still within the uh, definitions of space so you'll basically fly up over the atmosphere into space and then you'll stay a few minutes in space before the uh, capsule will uh, uh, follow its trajectory and drop down into the atlantic ocean so uh, with that uh, let's quickly get the uh, spacecraft uh, up and uh, running we are required to perform the final checks uh, checklist and I'm going to use the run feature uh, and still keep the checklist open so you can just follow along with the procedures. Uh, we did this in the previous video and I covered kind of this uh, in a little bit more detail back then. So the first step is to set the launch control to ready and then uh, ensure that the temperatures are on the mark which they are and that we have UHF uh, on uh, selected UHF radio for communication and then we'll need to perform a radio check 5 by 5 on UHF uh, and then uh, we'll need to um, hit the check mark to proceed with the checklist then we'll need to verify that the time zero button is uh, has its cover removed so you need to left click on this one to remove the cover you can put it back in using right click but do not press the button itself. It says warning, do not depress uh, the Type 0 button. This will trigger the functionality behind this. Uh, DC should be uh, monitoring battery 1, uh, primary battery 1 basically. And then uh, we need to arm the squibs uh, and arm the auto retro jettison uh, uh, squibs as well. And then uh, at T minus 30 seconds, we are going to go through the ascent checklist. So right now you can see that the procedures between Atlas and Redstone is identical so far. There's no differences in in uh, the pre-launch procedures. On launch however there are uh, some slight uh, differences uh, which means that on Atlas uh, once the booster engine is separated that's the two engines on the left and right side of the sustainer engine and that first half stage. Once that is uh, separated, we will go to the booster engine cutoff checklist. But if it's redstone, we will keep uh, using this uh, checklist all the way uh, through ascent until the engine is uh, cut off. So the, this la launch vehicle basically have only one engine on the bottom of its spacecraft. And this engine will bring the rocket into a suborbital trajectory. And once that one is uh, cut off, we'll uh, quickly go through the redstone checklist uh, on insertion, and then we'll continue into uh, the rest of the flight. So we're about 20 seconds uh, away from ignition. The first thing um, that we are going to need to do is to verify that the time from launch uh, starts counting. If not, we need to hit time zero. And secondly, we need to monitor if the altitude goes up. All right. Lift off. Okay, the clock is uh, running. Uh, no need to press that. Altitude is climbing. That means that we're now ascending uh, up and away from the launch pad at uh, Cape Kennedy or Cape Canaveral. Uh, you can also see that the uh, uh, G-forces are increasing as we ascend. Uh, the control fuel is 100% uh, on both auto manual. The abort light is important to monitor. If this uh, light is uh, illuminated, you will need to pull this handle to abort from the launch vehicle. And uh, that's the Control, Shift, Alt and Z 
uh, shortcut. The next thing we'll need to ensure is that the cabin pressure is uh, decreasing. So you can see that it started uh, from 14 and it's slowly drifting down towards its green zone, 545, where the ECS should be able to maintain. Cabin pressure is holding at 5.5. Cabin holding at 5.5. Isolated battery uh, monitoring, you can see that the voltage is fine. Uh, that applies for the standby batteries, uh, battery main battery 3, 2, and 1, and the main DC bus. Uh, everything looks good. Uh, the amps, uh, we have uh, this amount of load on the main bus, and this is divided into three different batteries uh, here. Standby battery 1 and 2 are not having any load, the same with uh, isolated. Isolated uh, batteries are only used during squibs, or if you connect it to the electrical power system uh, together with the standby batteries to power this main bus. But we'll go through that in the electrical power lesson later. So, uh, the main things during ascent now is to keep monitoring this, and then once engine cut off, we'll go into the red zone checklist. This happened just right now. Cut off! Tower jettison green! And we have this one green, that means that the tower is now gone. And then uh, after the uh, tower is gone, the capsule will be separated from the launch vehicle. And then uh, start its turnaround maneuver. So if I now zoom out, you can see that the launch vehicle is already quite far away from us. And we are now uh, separate from it and the capsule is turning around into its retrograde attitude. So I can hit run here, then we can say this one is green, this one is green, and then um, remove the auto uh, retro jettison, and then uh, depower some of these things to uh, avoid accidentally um, uh, trigger the uh, jettison of the retrograde engines. Uh, and then um, the next thing that we want to do is to go and start a pre-retro checklist. This uh, flight is only a couple of minutes in space, so it's very compressed, which means that you will need to execute things uh, quickly. So that's basically the, uh, the uh, ascent of a redstone mission. And the main differences is that the uh, 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 the redstone rocket has only one stage, while the uh, Atlas rocket has like a stage and a half, where the first two uh, engines as part of the booster stage is uh, separated uh, quite early in the ascent, while on redstone you have the same launch vehicle all the way up until you uh, have the capsule separation. Uh, the jettison tower is also jettisoned uh, in the middle of the ascent right after booster uh, engine cutoff or the booster separation on Atlas, while in Redstone the uh, tower is separated once you are in uh, this suborbital, once the ascent is complete basically. Uh, it's very important to know that there's uh, no need to do the orbit checklist and so on in this very compressed flight, so you basically go from this uh, checklist here and directly into the pre-retro and the pre-retro is important to remember that you don't have those 30 minutes. You don't need to touch these in redstone, but you will need to uh, go in and just make sure that all of these fuses are set correctly. I'll just mute this one. I'll uh, go through that later. Then uh, basically make sure that everything is in order and then uh, you should be fine for retrograde and the retros are now firing and we should be on our way uh, down towards Earth again. So this is uh, the main differences and you uh, got a good feel of how compressed the uh, retrograde uh, mission, uh, no the redstone mission actually is. So with that I will say thank you for watching and we'll go through the retrograde sequences in uh, uh, a later video.